Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Late last year I checked out Intel's new, or rather at the time it was their upcoming Core i3-7350K processor. That video was titled An Unlocked Core i3 Should You Buy It? And the answer to that question was pretty much a no. At $180 US or $270 Aussie, the 7350K is a mighty expensive dual core processor. And for just $20 US more, you can land the quad core Core i5-7400. Meanwhile, both confusingly cost the same amount down under. This then has quite a few of you asking me the question, should you buy the Core i3-7350K or the Core i5-7400 since they both cost about the same amount? The advantage of the slightly more expensive Core i5-7400 processor is its quad-core design and larger level 3 cache, the disadvantage being that it's locked at a base clock frequency of just 3 GHz with a maximum single core operating frequency of 3.5 GHz. There's a bit more to this comparison, but let's start with the headlines. The Core i3-7350K on the other hand comes clocked at least 20% higher, 40% higher in fact when comparing the Core i5's base clock frequency. This is also an unlocked K processor which means it can be overclocked to achieve even greater frequencies. I got my chip up to 4.8 GHz without much fuss and that means it's clocked almost 40% above the Core i5's maximum turbo boost frequency. A clock speed advantage of roughly 40 to 60% is huge, and with its hyper-threading support, the 7350K should really challenge the 7400. There are, however, a few other factors at play here, which make the 7350K a whole lot less enticing before we even get to the benchmarks. Consumers can pretty much get the most out of the Core i5-7400 on a $50 H110 motherboard with the standard Intel box cooler. Meanwhile, the 7350K requires a Z series motherboard. And with Z170 boards starting at $90 and Z270 boards at $110, that's quite a bit more. Not only that, but the 7350K requires an aftermarket cooler so you can add at least another $30 to the price tag. Therefore, consumers are looking at spending around $250 for the Core i5-7400 and an entry-level motherboard. Meanwhile, the 7350K will set you back at least $350 with a basic Z170 board and a budget tower-style air cooler. So in the end, you're paying about 20% more for the 7350K and its required components. Keeping all that in mind, how do the two compare? Well, let's go find out. First up, let's check out the single and multi-threaded performance using Cinebench R15. Here we see that despite a massive clock speed advantage, the 7350K is still quite a bit slower than the 7400 when comparing the multi-threaded performance. That said, when overclocked, the 7350K does look to be around 40% faster for single-threaded tasks. Excel is an application that has no problem utilising a large number of threads, and as such, the Core i5-7400 performs much better than the 7350K. Even when overclocked, the 7350K simply couldn't match the 7400, taking over 10% longer to complete the workload. Surprisingly, the overclocked 7350K was able to nudge ahead of the 7400 in our 7-zip benchmark. That said, it was just 4% faster. For any kind of encoding work, having four physical cores will always trump two cores with hyper-threading, and we see that here when testing with Premiere Pro CC. Even at 4.8 GHz, the 7350K was 4% slower than the 7400, taking 18 minutes and 16 seconds to complete the workload. Okay, so time for some games. Starting with Overwatch, we find that the overclocked 7350K is able to edge out the 7400, delivering a 3% higher average frame rate. Keep in mind that these results were gathered using the Titan XP at 1080p. The overclocked 7350K was able to edge out the 7400 when testing Gears of War 4. That said, it was just 5% faster when comparing the average frame rate. Although the unlocked Core i3 processor sees a rather large 17% performance boost from its 4.8 GHz overclock, it was still only able to match the performance of the 7400 for a Battlefield 1 test. Interestingly, that also places both processors on par with the Sandy Bridge Core i7-2600K processor. Even with the 4.8 GHz overclock, the 7350K couldn't beat the slightly more expensive Core i5 processor in Watch Dogs 2. Despite seeing a 13% performance boost, the Core i3 processor was only able to match the 7400. Well, for me, this graph really sums the situation up well. The overclocked 7350K was 10% slower in the Excel workload, and yet it consumed almost 80% more power than the 7400. For those wondering, what you are looking at here is total system consumption. Finally, here are the power consumption results when running the Prime 95 stress test. As you can see, the overclock 7350K consumes almost as much power as a Core i7-6700K. Unfortunately, despite being a lot of fun, the Core i3-7350K overclocking really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. For the most part, the stock clock 7400 is just as fast, or faster, 
consumes significantly less power, runs much cooler, and ultimately ends up costing less. So, as I said in my original review back in December, the 7350K really should be avoided. In fact, that really does go for the entire KB Lake Core i3 range, and even the higher clocked Pentium models such as the G4600 and 4620, at least given the current pricing landscape. The reason for this is Intel's own G4560, which I've already looked at extensively on the channel. Retailing for just $64 US, it's an incredibly good buy. It's 22% cheaper than the G4600, which costs $82, and yet it's clocked just 3% slower. It's the same when looking at the G4620. The G4560 is 31% cheaper, while it can't possibly be more than 5% slower. Move to the Core i3 range, and we find the Core i3-7100, retailing for $117 US. Now, other than a bump in operating frequency and a slight modification to the integrated graphics, this is the exact same processor. Clocked at 3.9 GHz, it's up to 11% faster. That doesn't, however, make it worth paying over 80% more for. It gets worse as you go on. The Core i3-7300 costs well over twice the price, but comes clocked less than 15% greater. So as I see it, consumers looking at buying a new 7th generation Intel processor have the choice of the Pentium G4560 at $64, or the Core i5-7400 at $200. As crazy as it sounds, everything else in between is a bit pointless. Anyway, I hope those trying to decide between the Core i3-7350K and the Core i5-7400K now know the right move to make. If you'd like to see any other CPU comparisons on the channel, please let me know in the comments below. More than happy to make it happen. I'm your host Steve, and I hope to catch you on another video really soon.